Welcome back once again. Still to come, Duke against Connecticut. When you think of some of the great games Duke has played over the last few years, you think back to 1989 in the regional final against Georgetown. You think 1992 regional final against Kentucky that went to overtime. But really, a couple of the best games happened in 90 and 91 against Connecticut. Mike Tirico has a look. They were 85 minutes of basketball filled with blood, sweat, heroes, villains, exultation, and despair. The Duke-Yukon saga began in the 1990 Eastern Regional Final after Chris Smith sank a three-pointer that sent the game into overtime. And Christian Leitner played out a childhood dream with his team down by one and less than three seconds to play. It was, uh, you know, one of the shots that you... You know, you goof around with in your driver when you're growing up, you know, three, two, one, shoot it. And Brian back to Leitner, he dribbles, takes the shot at the buzzer. Ah! Well, Leitner hit the shot, I just felt so much disappointment. That was a special season for us, winning 31 games, and we had a magical ride with Hennefeld and, and Chris Smith and Scotty Burrell and some great players for us. And it was disappointing that season was over. That season, we wanted to go on until uh, July sometime. The rematch came one year later in the Midwest Regional Semifinals. We felt they were definitely out for revenge because uh, they were a very good team the year before, one of the high highest ranked teams, and uh, we had beaten them with you know a span of two seconds. That game had its own excitement because uh, I got beat up a little bit, so people like to see that. <laughs> and now Seller's going to go on to the pileup, and he goes right down on Leitner's face, and then gives him some more. Well, supposedly Ross Sellers, uh, the center for our team. Uh, gave him sort of a flagrant foul. <laughs> it was just a flagrant foul, that was all. <laughs> but UConn's bruising attack couldn't overcome their shooting, just 40% from the field. Duke won 81-67, en route to capturing their first national title. Now, three and a half years later, the Huskies get another crack at their nemesis. With the uh, problems in the past with the Rod Sellers deal and a lot of, you know, people, you know, having their different opinions about, uh, you know, Christian Leitner, there's some times where it's like, well, we're, well I can't wait till we play uh, Duke because of them guys, you know, and, and we want to, want to, we want to stand up for, you know, for Connecticut. And the people of Connecticut would like nothing better than to exact some revenge on the team that once denied the Huskies a trip to the Final Four. I think there are a number of people throughout the country who don't like Duke. One reason is that if in games that we've played before, if we've won the majority of them or have won a big game, you're not going to like that team. Uh, if you're in this business long enough and you win, there are a lot of people who aren't going to like you. The Duke game became special, I think, for most teams who feel they have a legitimate shot to beat Mike. And uh, I think you're going against a team that you know is going to be there at the end and just see how we fit in December and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see them back sometime in March. And you likely will. Now, Duke is a team that's higher ranked coming into this game, but a lot of people expect Connecticut to win the game. Why is that? Well, I think because of the experience factor. Duke, of course, right now losing what they did with Grant Hill and the fact that they're playing a lot of freshmen. Yet, when you take a look at Connecticut, I think they have a serious problem, as we saw last year in the Big East Championship game against Providence. Because what happens is, look at the inside game with Dickie Simpkins, and this was a Connecticut. Go physical inside against UConn last year. Dickie Simpkins took it to him. Now watch what happens on the other side of the floor when you take a look at Michael Smith. Offensive rebound. Go up strong and in. Now when you react to this, here's Duke this year. Eric Meek was almost going to be redshirted. Krzyzewski said, no, you're playing. Here's why. Go inside to him. Then, of course, you got the offensive power when you take a look at Cherokee Parks. Miss shot. Go up. Slam dunk. Get it in. I really think this is where Duke tonight, he's going to look. Coach K, get it in, sign, pound it. What we saw with Providence is a weakness, and it's going to be interesting to see if Calhoun adjusts to that this year. Yeah, a couple of big guns now in the NBA who might have played in this game as well are moved on to the other level. But for UConn, what do they have to do to get the victory? Well, I think Duke last year showed with the inexperience of Capel playing as the point guard and the fact that he's got to do it this year. Collins is out of the lineup until January. Here's what happens. Watch the pressure with the turnovers. Capel looks inside to Antonio Lang. Turnover number one in this game. Same thing here. He sees Collins cross court, throws it away over his head, another turnover. Then, of course, here we are, Connecticut, tenacious, at Virginia. First game of the year, they just go full court trapped into transition, easy points. This is what they want to try to do to Duke tonight. Just keep the pressure on. Full court, half court, just keep coming at you. Turnover again. 
going right at you. And I think Duke, because they've got three freshmen playing, the inexperience of that. When you take a look, here's Connecticut against Georgetown in the Big East. Georgetown having trouble inside. The pressure again of Connecticut coming through. Another transition points. And I think the way to beat Duke's pressure defense is to force the Connecticut pressure into turnovers by Duke. And it's going to be interesting to see how Capel adjusts to this, but how Coach K adjusts, because this is one way Connecticut can take away the inside game by going full court let everybody play 94 feet. And expect to see some tremendous man-to-man -man defense in this contest as well. That one is coming up next. Duke against UConn as the DirecTV Grade 8 continues from the Palace.